Welcome to Longmont Public Media's Conversation with the Candidates. I'm Richard Lyons, and I'm here today with Sean McCoy, one of the six candidates for the two at-large positions on City Council. Welcome, Sean. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Good. So, Sean, tell us a little bit about yourself so Longmont can get to know you better. Okay. Well, uh, I've, uh, I'm a, a native of Longmont. I was born and raised here, as my wife and my children have been, too. I'm 56 years old. I went to Central Elementary, Longs Peak uh, Junior High, and Longmont High School, Go Big Blue. I uh, have a degree in political science and uh, a uh, master's in education uh, from the University of Northern Colorado, and just am a pesky dissertation away from having my PhD. So I've served on multiple boards and commissions prior to my uh, previous term on city council in 2007. I served on the uh, Housing and Human Services Commission, the um, Police Standards Board, the um, uh, Boulder County Open Space, and the, uh, um, let me see here, Planning and Zoning Commission. So I've had that experience. And then when I was on council, I served on different boards and commissions like uh, Housing and Human Services, Art and Public Places, uh, Youth Council and such. And uh, I've also uh, received a bronze level leadership a certificate from the National League of Cities. Uh, that means that I've gone to all kinds of professional developments to get a better understanding of what we can do to make Longmont a better place. After my service on City Council in 2011, I actually uh, served on uh, the uh, Historic Preservation Commission. I've served on uh, the uh, District Accountability uh, for Boulder Valley uh, from my school as a teacher. And uh, I am currently a board director for the Future Business Leaders of America uh, for Colorado for District 2, which encompasses Boulder Valley, St. Rain Valley, and a few of the metro schools down in Denver. Good. Yeah. Good. So um, what one thing do you want the Longmont voters to know about you? Just one thing. One thing, my commitment, uh, my commitment to Longmont. If you ask any of my friends from way back when and to now, they all know that I'm always one of the biggest cheerleaders and people that are always talking about Longmont and how wonderful it is. And I just want people to understand that I get it. I get that Longmont is a great place and I want to keep it that way. Very good. Very good. So this is kind of a tricky question. What, what do you especially like, but also what you especially don't like about Longmont? Hmm. Well, um, I think that uh, what I particularly like our parks and our recreation and, and, uh, and uh, the places and the activities that we do as a community. But uh, I think sometimes Longmont uh, uh, short sells itself. And I think that uh, we need to make sure that uh, uh, Longmont is always uh, perceived in a very positive light. It's a great community and we have so many wonderful things uh, happening here that I think we just have to constantly uh, keep our chins up and, and recognize how wonderful a community we actually live in. Very good. Very good. So I'm going to give you a hypothetical. If the city received a $1 million grant to use for the city in any way that the council could choose, what would you do with it and why? Well, uh, I don't think a million dollars would go very far uh, to uh, moving our dreams of RTD fast track uh, there. But I do think that uh, it would go pretty far to addressing our uh, uh, needs to do something about our homeless community. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, it's really important that we uh, look out for the least of our brothers and sisters that are struggling in this world and make sure that they are taken care of, so. Good. So Sean, did, did you have a person that was your mentor where that was very influential in your life? And if so, how did that person help or influence you? Well, uh, as many people know, my father, Tom McCoy, was a uh, high school teacher at Niwot High. He taught uh, US Gov. I teach uh, US Gov at Monarch High School. And uh, he served uh, 22 and a half years on Longmont uh, City Council. And I learned at his feet. Uh, you know, he had a great uh, influence on me. Uh, also, my uh, Government teacher at Longmont High, Jim Gillen, had a big influence on me. And I feel that uh, uh, he always joked that 
Uh, he doubted that, but uh, the truth was is that he had a big influence on me. And so uh, between my dad and Jim Gillen, it was uh, really those two. Okay, good. So are you uh, paying it forward? Are you mentoring or helping someone? Uh, um, I am paying it forward. Uh, my uh, daughter Molly is, uh, is interested in uh, political life and has been uh, for many years. And she is my campaign manager currently. Mm -hmm. And she is one heck of a campaign manager. She's uh, thoughtful and considerate and, and uh, somebody that I admire uh, from this generation. And I have a lot of faith. I have a lot of faith in this generation. Uh, I think they have so much going for them and I want to support them and make sure that they are, uh, uh, they have the, what they need to be successful in Longmont. Good. Mm -hmm. So, um, as you know, Colorado and Longmont both have lots of recreational opportunities. Mm -hmm. Which do you enjoy and how do you spend your uh, recreational time? Well, we uh, uh, hike in the, in the mountains up near Allen's Park. Uh, and uh, I also ski cross country and downhill. And so I enjoy those recreational activities. Um, I haven't, uh, st uh, was it uh, windsurfed uh, for many years, but I thought maybe in my retirement, I might get into uh, uh, doing some uh, paddle boarding because hmm. I'm just around the corner from Macintosh. Ah, yeah. very good. So, Sean, it looks like Longmont, uh, from the latest map, um, and I think it came out some minor revisions last week, uh, Longmont will switch from being in the 4th Congressional District to the 2nd based upon that map, the latest map. What impact, if any, do you think that will have on Longmont? Well, I uh, went to one of those redistricting meetings uh, and uh, listened to the arguments and uh, heard what people were saying. And I think it will be positive. I think uh, uh, the one disappointment that uh, not all of Boulder County will be part of that uh, District 2 uh, from my uh, observation. It looked like Nederland uh, and some of those along the uh, upper part of Boulder County might not be. And I think that's not a great idea. I think they need to stay in Boulder County. Uh, and um, I think that Longmont uh, uh, will, will have real representation there because we have issues in Boulder County and, and you know, uh, only a year ago was there a fire that was encroaching uh, and very, very close to Longmont. And uh, our neighbors saw uh, pieces of uh, people's books and, and libraries mm -hmm. coming down in full pages. Yes. in their backyards. And so the thing is, is that uh, climate change is real and it's time that we probably need to uh, have a uh, representative that understands that. Very good. So how do you learn and stay informed about local, state and national and international issues? Well, I, I listen to uh, National Public Radio on my drive in. I uh, pay attention to our local uh, news outlets, uh, ABC, NBC, CBS, uh, and PBS. Uh, I uh, read up on what's going on in Longmont Ledger and in the Times Call, and uh, uh, I talk to people. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. So national politics are very divisive in our mm -hmm. federal and state governments, as you know. Although the city is technically nonpartisan, some say it's becoming more political. What would you do to keep that divisiveness from occurring in Longmont City Council? Yeah, that that can be a real problem. Uh, I think people uh, misunderstand what our responsibility as Longmont City Council members really is. There's a learning curve to getting on Longmont City Council. And if uh, you've never served on a board or commission or on, uh, a, uh, on city council before, uh, there's probably about a two year learning curve before you actually see and understand that it's not about the national politics. It's really about Longmont. It's really about where Longmont uh, uh, community members are. It's about our parks and our libraries and our, uh, and our sewer and water and our, uh, our uh, trash collection and our recycling. Those are the issues. And I don't see those as being very political. Uh, I see them as just being important issues that face Longmont. So how do you plan on including the voters more in the decision-making uh, uh, of, of the city council? Well, when I served on uh, uh, council before, we brought on 
activities like coffee with council. Uh, that wasn't established prior to that point. And that gives us a more uh, uh, local look at where people are and the issues that they are really interested in and allows people to voice those without feeling like they have to get up in front of council, a little nerve wracking, you got three mm -hmm. minutes, yeah. uh, you have to say your address and your name. And by the time you're done, you've uh, uh, flubbed your speech a couple of times and you're, none of that happens at a coffee with council. People actually can talk to you. And I think that's really what is important because I think we need to show compassion and understanding that not everybody is a great orator. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you could change one thing in the current city charter, uh, excuse me, uh, ordinances, city uh, code, what, what would you change in the municipal code? Just one thing. Hmm. I think um, right now we're probably uh, in a situation where I think we probably should look a little bit deeper into how much uh, we are actually requiring for affordable housing. Uh, we might need to increase that. When I served on council before in 2009, uh, that component was removed and uh, the inventory that we had uh, went back into the general uh, population uh, of uh, houses. And so we had about over a hundred houses that were affordable. We need to make some of that up. That was a very poor decision and uh, I didn't support it at that time. And I think that now we have to make sure that uh, if we're going to try to make sure that our police and fire and other uh, folks that uh, uh, need to live and work in Longmont can afford housing, then uh, our essential workers, then, then it's important that we have affordable housing for them. Well, that leads into our next question. Wow. <laughs> uh, between affordable housing and attainable housing, mm -hmm. which would you prioritize as being more important in the city? Um, I think attainable housing is just a, a new buzzword a little bit uh, brought on to try to uh, promote a narrative. It's really around affordable housing and the inclusionary uh, housing issues. And uh, the truth is, is that uh, there's, there's a couple of different things that we can approach. Uh, we can look at uh, uh, trying to bring in more inventory from rental houses, uh, rental units that may not be necessarily up to code and come up with a way of working with those folks so that, uh, that those that might want to bring a mm -hmm. uh, uh, apartment on, let's say in prospect, I was on plan zoning when prospect came on. That's the gold standard of really good development. Mm -hmm. And all those units there that uh, were mother-in-law's roosts and things like that, uh, what wasn't probably told to those folks is that you have to get another meter on that unit before you can really get out there and rent it. And so we need to be, come up with a process uh, that allows people to bring those on uh, legally. There's probably plenty that, of folks during this pandemic that uh, had to make a hard choice about keeping their homes. And they might've come up with, oh, well, we can uh, uh, make our basement into this, or we can do our mother-in-law's roost into that. And now they're having a few sleepless nights because they're trying to see how they can make it legal. We need to come up with real solutions to making those types of uh, uh, affordable housing legal so that uh, people don't have sleepless nights and that we can do something to really help our community. Very good. Yeah. Well, Sean, that ends our conversation for today. Okay. Uh, thank you for stopping by. I yeah. know you've got a busy schedule. Sure. Well, thank you very much for having me. I good luck in your to, campaign. To uh, uh, be in your city councilman. Okay. Good. Please vote for me, Sean McCoy. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you.